This was three years ago, and I started college down the country. I was 18 and on Tinder. I never actually met anyone off it, but I would just swipe through the guys just to be nosy and see who was on it. I was swiping right on some, and about an hour after, got a message off this guy, who according to his account was about 20 kilometers away. We made some small talk, and it was awkward and I stopped replying. A day later, I got a friend request off him on Facebook. Mind you, I have a common enough name so it would have took ages for him to have found me. We have no mutual friends and my Tinder photos is not on my Facebook page. The only thing I had on it was the university I was attending, so maybe that's how he found me, but I don't know. I then quickly got a follow request on Instagram and he somehow found my Snapchat username. I don't have it on my social media, and it is a variation of my full name with extra added in vowels and underscore. I was freaking out at this point. I messaged him asking how he found out my full name and he just replied with, I think we have a connection. I really want to get to know you better. I unmatched him, deleted my Tinder and blocked the accounts he tried to add me on all social media. After that, it was quiet for a few months. I was staying in digs and was knuckling down as I had a lot of assignments from the get-go. This was towards the end of November. I had no assignments due for two weeks, so I decided to go out with some friends. One of my friends stayed in student accommodation and the other was commuting, so she was staying with the other friend. I decided to walk back to my digs as my landlady would probably freak out if I wasn't home that morning, and I really wish I got a taxi instead. My walk back was about 15 minutes from the local nightclub we were at. It was about 3 a.m. at this point. I was at the front door of the house opening up. The door was annoying as it had two different locks and I had to pull the handle towards myself to help open it up. It's also tough when you're tipsy and trying not to wake up the family you're staying with. Anyway, as I finally unlock the door, a dark car pulls into the housing estate I'm staying in. It's quite big and has a big green area in the middle for children or people to play with their dogs. The car comes towards me, so I quickly get inside and lock the door. The car pulls into the driveway of the house I'm staying in and just sits there with the full headlights on. I'm there shaking and too afraid to move from crouched below the door as there's frosted glass about halfway up. As I get the courage to go upstairs to look out my bedroom window to see who it is, the car pulls out of the driveway and speeds away. A few days later, I get a new friend request off the creepy Tinder guy on a new Facebook profile as there were no photos on this account, just the same name, blocked. It was enough that it caused me to transfer universities the following year. Thankfully I haven't heard anything since. I don't know if it was just bad timing or if it was that creep on Tinder that sat in the driveway, but it was petrifying. If you take anything from this, be careful who you let in on social media or dating apps and what information you have up. When I was in high school, I knew my parents' divorce was imminent. My mom was cheating on my dad, and my dad was cheating on my mom. I did everything I could to prevent my parents divorcing, but I knew it was a lost cause. My mother had been planning to leave him for a long time and eventually served him on my 17th birthday. They agreed to live under the same roof until I was out of high school, so I wouldn't have the stress of having two homes. When I was a little over 18, my mom had been consistently conversing with men on multiple dating apps. She even got an app that I was known to use called Kick Messenger. She fell asleep with the app open one night, and I'd seen that she was messaging a man named I'm not sure if I'm going to use his name due to privacy concerns, obviously. I ignored it, but I'd known the name and seen the face multiple times on her cell phone. Fast forward maybe two months. My dad and I were just spending time together and wanted to go out somewhere to eat. His friend called him up that night. My dad has been known to be a social drinker who frequented local bars. 
He had many good friends that were bartenders and fellow social drinkers. His friend was at a local bar and met a man named AJ who was looking for my father by name in order to buy a vehicle. My dad is a car sales manager so we stopped by the bar that night because we thought we'd eat there. The bar isn't shabby or the typical bar most would think of. We live in a small town and the bar was on the lake and people could rent lots to put their campers on it. it was like a club lodge. The man introduced himself as AJ. However, I recognized him immediately as the man who my mother had been conversing online with. I didn't say anything to my dad at first. I for sure thought he just looked similar and I was overreacting. That is until he called me by my full name without anyone introducing him to me or even saying my name. He knew my first, middle, and last name. He also came up to greet me at the table I was sitting at. He tried getting me to open lotto tickets for him and was rubbing up against me and trying to touch my inner thighs. I was kind of frozen and didn't know what to do. He eventually left me alone after he saw people staring at him. I did what I knew I had to do. I googled his first name on Google and Facebook and that's when I found out that he was a registered offender, ex-con in the bordering state over. I looked repeatedly from AJ to the man on my phone screen and there was no doubt he was the same dude. He only lived about 30 minutes away from our own home. I pulled my dad to the side and told him that this man was not who he said he was. I showed him the picture and the information I'd found. I ran to the bathroom crying because I knew something bad was happening. He lied about his name, knew both me and my father's names, and knew where my father worked. After hearing this info, my dad refused to go outside with AJ. He made multiple attempts at getting my dad outside alone to take a look at my dad's truck due to the fact he wanted something similar. He eventually stopped pushing my dad and went outside for a smoke. The manager at the bar immediately locked the doors and locked him outside, refusing to let him back in. Everyone in the bar, most of them were close friends of my dad, had seen how suspicious he was acting and many had seen him rubbing up against me. The manager called the cops to report him. It didn't take long for him to figure out that he had been caught and he attempted to leave the bar and drive away. My dad followed him up the road, trying to make sure he didn't get away. However, he was plastered and ended up crashing into the snowbank just up the road from the bar. He was caught by the police and charged with a DWI. He was jailed just five minutes up the road from home. I did not sleep a good night's sleep for about a month. If he knew my family as well as he seemed to, he probably knew where I lived. He was bailed out only two days after the incident. His vehicle had been found with duct tape, drugs, rope, a crowbar, and other materials in it. When they impounded his car, he was also charged for violating his probation. He is a tier 3 offender. He'd raped a minor with a deadly weapon and was required to register for life. He was not supposed to leave the state at the time of the incident. Not supposed to have a Facebook or almost any form of social media where he could reach a minor and was not allowed to even operate his vehicle due to his license being taken away. I also ended up pressing charges for sexual harassment as well as getting a restraining order against him. I also found out later through phone records and the police tracking his phone that he'd driven past my home more than 20 times in the week leading up to the incident. He had also been to my dad's job in my school multiple times throughout a period of six months. He'd been following both of us for a long time. I have never experienced something so crazy or scary in my life. I live in a completely different state thousands of miles away now. Thank God. But my family is still in that state that the incident happened. He still has yet to be charged or arrested with the harassment stalking charges and probably never will be seeing as if he comes back to the state, he can be arrested if he so much as gets pulled over because he has a warrant out for his arrest. Since then, I do not ever put my full name on any social media. I only put my first name except for things like Facebook. 
I've become a very paranoid person when it comes to my full name and my address or other personal info. Please everyone, be careful who you talk to on these dating sites. You never know who's behind the screen or what their true intentions are. And if you do find someone you like, investigate and do your homework. I lived in a town with a population of 5,000 and never once thought this kind of thing could happen to me.